You have a job to do. One job. <laughs> Your job is to reflect the God that you see. And many people do. They reflect their idols, or you can reflect the God that you see through a pure heart. That's your job. One job. It's real simple. And how do you reflect the God that you see? You give Him your heart, you give Him your time, you give Him your mind, you give Him your body, you give Him all your feelers, body, soul, and spirit, everything. And you project Him through your life. His life comes through your life. His words come through your words. His thoughts come through your thoughts. He becomes your Lord and your master in your atmosphere. He becomes all in all. He's all and he's in all, the body of Christ. I remember kneeling down and bawling my eyes out inside a church worship service with that guy, Daryl Evans. He came to one of the meetings that uh, used to go to this worship invasion thingy where we just worship God. It was pretty dope for like hours on end. And Dar you know, I'm trading my sorrows. That guy, he wrote that song. And uh, I remember just bawling my eyes out on the chair because, holy spirit, whoa. <laughs> because I have one job. And that's to manifest God to people who can't see Him. And to people who can see Him. And I'm like, that job is impossible! Because I've seen His glory, I've seen His peace, I've seen His face, I've seen the fire, I felt the glory, I felt the life of God coming right through me. And then I looked at myself, I'm like, this little sack of flesh is supposed to project Him? Yeah, because he was born of the Spirit as one spirit with the Lord. The only way you can get your job done is you die to yourself. You die to the fallen nature, you die to your selfishness, and you let the Lord, who is your Lord, be all in all, through all. <laughs> through your mind, through your heart, through your words, through your actions, through everything you do. It's just everything is focused on Him so that He can just come right through where you're focused. And sometimes He'll even release grace and just hit other areas that you didn't even know <laughs> existed. Whoa, hallelujah. He'll go into the dark places and He'll flick on the light switch and say, hey, you want to give me that area too? And uh, you give that area too, and it's always worth it. Hallelujah. Let's have some sparkling water. Praise God. Oh, it splashed my face. Baptize us with the heavenly water, Father God, from above, in Jesus' name. You can have all you want. All things are yours. Yeah. <laughs> Why is this thing keep going darker in the light? Yeah, get rid of all the nukes to your Lord, in Jesus' name. Shaka. So yeah, it's real simple. Let's give everything to God right now so we can even start to be relevant on the earth. Nobody's relevant until they can release the releaser. Until <laughs> they can release life more abundantly because we've seen what death can do. We've seen what man can do apart from the Spirit. There's thousands of denominations <laughs> that can show what man can do. I want to see what God can do. So anyways, I'm on my chair bawling my eyes out. And God likes that. God likes that when we see our weakness, our how pathetic our strength is next to the strength of the Lord. And then he just floods right through that area that you've like realized that I cannot do anything. Jesus said, I myself can do nothing. It's the Father that does the works. That takes all the pressure off. <laughs> he made it so easy. He took everything. He's done everything he could, he could possibly ever do so that we could just receive and release what we've received.
A man can receive nothing unless it's been given from above. Well, you've been given all authority in heaven and in earth from above in the name of Jesus. That's not just quoting Jesus at the name, like his, like in Jesus' name, amen. You're literally in the name of Jesus. You're in the substance and the spirit of Christ Jesus himself. When you speak under the anointing of in Jesus' name himself, that has the power to destroy principalities and shake them right out of the heavens. It has the power to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and freely you have received his name. Freely you can release his name. <laughs> In Jesus' name, hallelujah. <laughs> Shapa. So you have one job to do. Your job is to focus every part of your being and dive right through that double-edged sword right into his heart and do a trade there. You receive all of him for all of you. Hallelujah. Shatare kre. Hora bashatere. All of Jesus. When you plead the blood of Jesus, you know what you're pleading? You're taking the very life of God and placing it upon a situation. The life of God. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can, will raise you from the dead. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of you. And the blood of Jesus is the, <laughs> an, enough power to save you from death. And the resurrection power of Jesus is your resurrection power. His crucifixion is your crucifixion. His resurrection is your resurrection. Know where you sit and live from that area. Demons come in all shapes and forms and sizes and thoughts, atmospheres, pains and torments. Well, listen. If you sit it with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities, powers, and dominions, that means you have the authority to shake those things out of the atmosphere, out of the body, and out of your face. <laughs> Hallelujah. And His name is His, who He is. Shaba, I feel a nice warm, caramel key presence of the Lord right now, hallelujah. It took a little bit of warfare. I'm still at this carnival thing or whatever, Alder Grove Fair. The first video I did was just warfare, like wow. Just getting hit from every side and a little, like a, a little splash of anointing and then like a, a wing slap with a demon. <laughs> well, that's okay. It feels a lot better in the spirit right now, hallelujah. And I just wanted you to get perfectly aligned and in focus with the Holy Maker, <laughs> your Holy Maker, Jesus Christ Himself, and God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. So we place all of our affections on you, Father. We place all of our affections, all of our thoughts, and all of our heart on you, living God. Hallelujah. And when you know that Jesus is the Christ, flesh and blood doesn't reveal that to you. It's only revealed by the Spirit. Flesh and blood can tell you all about Jesus Christ, the Spirit, the angels, and all these things. But it's not truly known until it's fully known in the Spirit. Because <laughs> that's where things are revealed. It's in the Spirit. The Spirit of God searches the deep things of God and makes them known to us. The sons of God. He makes them known. Hallelujah. Shama. So it's a really, it's a necessity to get to know the Holy Ghost. If you don't know the Holy Ghost, you're going to get tossed to and fro by all the doctrines of men because it's the Spirit of Truth who leads you into all truth. It's the Spirit of Truth that leads you to the person of Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that draws all of us to Jesus Christ and then He reveals the Father to us. 
you can have flesh and blood talk about him, but if there's no spiritual substance coming, unless there's a supernatural grace of an open heaven that comes and God just drops a bomb on you, like through a dream or revelation, or God just, just supernaturally. I mean, God spoke through donkeys. Uh, even that guy in the New Testament there in the book of Acts prophesied through him that, you know, it's needful for Jesus to suffer and die, you know? Who was that, that high priest that year? Can't remember his name right now. There's grace, but I'm talking about like straight up, you need the Spirit of God to lead you into all truth. Because you can be tossed to and fro by every single thought system, belief system. Like a lot of things that are in the church right now are not God. Some of it is. A lot of it is not. It's just the knowledge of good and evil that does not bring you into an experience with God. It's just knowledge about God that doesn't produce any righteousness in you. It runs you at the risk of being more religious because knowledge can puff you up and you get prideful and you debate people and it doesn't, it's just the, fr it's the fruit of the flesh. True fruit of the Spirit is peace, love, joy. You read it in Galatians, patience. And uh, you, you don't debate. You speak the truth like a cutting sword. And whether they receive it or not, that's, that's up to the Holy Spirit to draw them. You've done your job to reflect what God's revealed to you. If it's been revealed to you by the Spirit, it will have spiritual substance on it to bring the change within that person. But if it's just knowledge, uh, so you've memorized the Bible like the Pharisees have and rejected Christ that was standing right before them, well, it's not going to change anything. It's just going to make you more religious. So, yeah, listen to the Bible day and night. I do. But always looking for the Spirit to teach us. You have no need that any man teaches you. But it's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will teach you all things. The Spirit of God. You might ask, well, how do I know if the Spirit of God is speaking to me? Do you have a worship life? Do you not know what the anointing is? Like when you surrender all your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit to God, who are you surrendering it to? Look at who the fruit of the Spirit is. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Check, uh, like that's His nature, you know? Check out uh, Romans chapter 8. We cry, Father, Abba, Father. And His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the, that we are the children of God. His Spirit will bear witness. You'll get whacked by the Spirit of God. You'll feel a tidal wave of peace go right boom, through you. It's not emotional. It will make your emotions go on overdrive because it's first Spirit flowing through it. And, you know, it's a spiritual substance. It's like, you know, you can... Some people, you'll, you'll just walk into an atmosphere and there you feel the rage and the anger in the air and you don't even know why. You felt fine before you went into that atmosphere. Well, there was a spirit of rage there. Or sometimes you go into worship service and you feel this, this peace. And uh, well, that's the spirit of God. He's the principality of peace, Jesus. Jesus is the principality of peace. So, his spirit is peace, life, joy, um, kindness, <laughs> patience, the lie in nature as well, the fear, there's the spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is not fear from the Lord, it's the fear of the Lord, it's like a, it's this amazing awe and reverence of like the wow, wow, it's like you see something about God and you're like, wow. It's like the angels can experience that continuously, the seraphim and the cherubim. They're like, wow, God is love. Wow, God saved that wicked man. God saw something that nobody else could see and pulled that precious seed out to be seen. With God, all things are possible, you know? <laughs> That's to me the fear of the Lord. I had a dream that I told it many times in my videos. It's so, it just, it's impacted me. Where I just had this reoccurring dream of sitting in Christ in heavenly places and the world pulled me down and I fell into this eternity. I was just about to die. Then, I, then God woke me up in his hand and I was in the hands of God. Just before I fell into eternity, I would have died forever. 
He loved me, he loved me so much that he would not let me fall into eternity. And I was like, wow, God, you could have allowed me to fall into eternity. I know I'm wicked. I know I'm like filthy and I'm just running from you and doing my own thing. But God was so merciful. It was the mercy and kindness of God that led me to repentance. And I stood in awe and wept at the mercy and goodness of God. He was like, you're, you're in my hands, son. You're in my hands. And he also said to me, we we're gonna be together forever. The Holy Spirit filled my room with his peace. And he spoke to me. And as I, I saw in the natural, just this man's hand, he was wearing this covenant ring. And it just zoomed in to my face. And, I, and the Holy Spirit spoke oddly to me, like, we're gonna be together forever. Why? Because of the covenant. He's the spirit of truth and he'll lead me into all truth. And the, the deeper you go into truth, the more the false and deception the lies become exposed for what they are and they fall off of you because they're worthless. You don't, once you've tasted and seen how good God is, the worthless things fall right off of you. If you choose God, if you like life, if you want God more than death, you will get God. <laughs> You'll get eternal life. Eternal life is not living forever, existing forever. Eternal life is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is eternal. He is your life. He's your eternal life. And we do exist forever in the eternal one. We're in Christ. God is coming back for those who are in Christ. You know? Hallelujah. He's coming back for a pure and a spotless bride made, made, you know, gone through the fire, getting ironed up by the, by the sword of the Lord. <laughs> we're just spotless, without wrinkle. I wonder if that means that we're going to become, uh, he's going to take away aging, you know, the young children still be, you know, if they die at a hundred, they'll be considered a curse, <laughs> you know, because we've taken on our father's nature. He lives forever. Eternal life is the person, Jesus Christ himself. And we will exist forever. Listen, demons exist forever. They don't have eternal life. They just exist forever in death. Hallelujah. We're going to exist forever in eternal life. Glory. Going from glory to glory. You think this level of glory is good? Wait till you get to the next level. You think that level of glory is good? Wait till you get to the next level. You think that level of glory is good? Enoch's tasted that years ago. <laughs> Wait till you just go deeper and deeper into the heart of God and it ravels who what he's really like. Like, oh my gosh, God, I thought you were just like this cherubim, little baby angel floating in the clouds, you know. <laughs> That's what man taught us what you're like, but you're not like that at all. Fire in your eyes, burning glory, just your skin is like diamonds and you zoom in and you can see. We're hidden inside you, hallelujah faces of your bride in you. Just looking at all those faces in the glory. Hallelujah. We're wearing the armor of God. <laughs> and you're wearing your precious bride. Hallelujah. Shuck a diamond shining with the light of God shining out through it. One shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand with the light of God scattering all the enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's pretty noisy here. There's gun... <laughs> Yeah, I'm at this Elder Grove Festival thingy. I don't know. I was walking around. There's a bunch of stuff. A lot of people into weird stuff. We're into the good stuff. We're into the sauce of the gospel. Right now, my friend is praying for someone to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Just like five feet away from me. My wife is, uh, she's got these wax bags. And I'm here to make videos. Because I get, I felt some waves of glory going through me. So I'm like, yeah, let's make another video and release some of this stuff. The first video is pure warfare. This is a lot better. This is more of a drinking video. And uh, maybe some encouragement, some teaching, some refocusing. Get your heart, your mind, and your affections, your spirit, everything focused back on your maker. And you will do well. He will do the works. You will cease striving and just rest. And the Lord does the works through you. As you walk with him in the cool of the day through the earth garden in your heart, and manifested outwardly in the earth garden. Hallelujah. What's up? Hallelujah. I went and watched this country music video. 
There's so much weird stuff going on here. There's this guy. There's this guy. Uh, what's his name? You hear the boom? I heard the boom when you did that. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I think you, you think you threw it in the spirit that way. <laughs> I heard the boom. Whoa, let there be light. Uh, my friend's just throwing glory bobs at me. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the weird stuff. There's these cowboys. He's like, come down to Cowboy Church and have a beer. <laughs> oh man, how about we go to the glory and just drink some glory dust. <laughs> how about we get into the glory and drink the wine of his presence and eat the flesh of revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tastes better than beer. Hallelujah. The beer. Did you hear the beer guy? You probably missed that one, eh? There's this guy. Yeah, you want to sit down here for a while? I'm just making a video. It's kind of weird. There was a guy. Okay, you can continue on. I'm just going to talk to my friend. There was this guy. He was uh, he's uh, one of those cowboys. He's like, uh, why don't you Come on down to Cowboy Church and have a beer. <laughs> like, man, if you're gonna invite people to your church, there should be some glory dust. You know, at least sprinkle them with some glory as they walk through the door. You know. Where is this guy? Oh, he was on the stage earlier. Oh. Yeah, it was. He said, "Come on down to Cowboy Church to have a beer." <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So trying to do, draw people with natural means. That's fine. I think it's, I read somewhere about oh, salad. I think I read somewhere about the Holy Spirit draws people. I don't know. I could just be Jesus' opinion though, right? Yeah. All right, well, I think I'm going to be done for this video. I'm going to get some spiritual readings. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, did, you, did that guy receive the Holy Spirit? Just so high. Sorry. <laughs> he just finished saying. That's a prophetic word, by the way. He said, I, I said, right? what did you feel from that? He said, well, last week on Canada Day, yeah. he did. He, he, he asked me some ecstasy, and he said, it's, it's, I felt like the really pure version of this, some sort of drug. I was like, what oh, is ecstasy? that? Oh, ecstasy. Yeah. And he said, it's like. Yeah, that's the counterfeit of like, acid is like the counterfeit of going into like trances and visions. Right? Because there's like a peace there, but that peace is absent when you go into those like hallucinations on acid. I remember just falling into a trance. I don't know if I told you about this. You might have watched on one of my videos, but I was laying at work, I was tired, and I just laid down, and my, I was half asleep. And this peace just, poof, I went in, like I felt myself go into a realm of peace. And that was when I was into a trance, so I wouldn't manipulate the vision. And then in the trance, I had a vision and I saw myself, well, actually I heard Jesus preaching through me. It's like, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Like, and in the beginning, like I stepped into that heaven and I stepped into that earth, which is our spirit, like you know, you know, he was he was preaching to me and oh. Psalm 91. He went on and on about like um, he who dwells under the shadow, wait, in the sh under the shadow of the Almighty shall dwell by uh, in the shadow. I can't even remember right now. I had to be in that anointing, to, and it was just all about in, in, in for like 10 minutes. And then as he was preaching to me about this this sermon, I saw myself uh, standing before all these Asians, like I'm in this trance. But in the trance I'm having a vision, I'm seeing all these Asians. And I'm and I'm like, I'm the shepherd of the sheep. You uh, whoever tries to come into me some other way is the same as a thief and a robber, blah blah blah. And then uh I kind of came out of that. I was like, wow, that was awesome. And then I just kind of meditated on that for a while. And after work. Shut up. After work, and after work, I went to. Fun, you come out another time. He was really grateful for you coming out and. Um, all right. Shaba. Awesome. Yeah. After work, I left. I went to get on a bus. 
And I was going home. No, I don't want. I don't want money. No. Use it to pay off the thing. Whatever you guys did there. I don't. I don't take money from my ministry. <laughs> yeah. I take prayers. I'll take prayers, but not, I don't know. I feel weird about the like the money thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Ten is government. <laughs> Give it back to God. And uh, sitting on the bus, I was like, God, where's that in the Bible? Like, where, like, what you're preaching about, like, the shepherd of the sheep and stuff like that. It's funny how we just got a, someone just dropped off a ten dollar bill. <laughs> John chapter ten, he said. I'm like, no, that can't. It's not that easy. Like, the Holy Spirit just walked right by me. We just like the presence of God went for one second. John chapter ten. Then he lifted off of me. I was like, no, that is. It's not that easy. I, I went through Matthew, Shaka. I went through Mark, where's the shepherd of the sheep? And there it was, like John chapter 10. I am the shepherd, like the same thing that, like, uh, that he spoke to me in the vision. So I'm like, whoa, this really was God. Yeah. I know, sometimes you, yeah. sometimes you get a little bit like, oh, I don't know if that was God, I might've just been having an experience. So he confirmed the vision, confirmed the trance, and he confirmed by the scriptures. And so two weeks later, I, was, I didn't get translated, I took a plane. <laughs> I flew over to Taiwan, and you know what I preached about? Oh, in the trance? Yeah, in, in, in the reality, I actually, two weeks later from this trance, I was literally standing in Taiwan. You know what I preached about? I'm the shepherd of the sheep, <laughs> you know? Anyone who comes to me in a different way, like, the same as a thief in a lot, I preached that, I knew what to talk about. Wow. And God even prepared me on the streets, because I went to a street church out there, and there was this dog. And I saw this dog on the street. He was skin and bones. So I went up to him and I had brought him my breakfast. I'm like, here you go, buddy, here you go. Have some food. And he's like scared of me and he was like running away. Oh, it broke my heart. So I just kind of left my breakfast there. I gave him my food. I went, to, I went back to the people who I was sitting with. And I was like, we're taking that dog back to Canada. And I know I'm allergic to God, uh, to God, <laughs> to dogs. Dog spelled backwards is God. <laughs> I don't know allergic to dogs, but it doesn't matter. We're, this, no animal should suffer this way. This compassion came over me, which was God. It wasn't any compassion of myself, because I, I usually don't like dogs. And uh, so God was teaching me something about self-sacrificing. And uh, that's what he did as the shepherd of the sheep. He laid his life down to pick it up in resurrection power, right? To bring us into heavenly places. So, and I realized I went, go back to, went back for the dog and the dog was gone. And the breakfast was still there and I couldn't find the dog. And I learned something about, he's the shepherd of the sheep who have gone astray. All these bad pastors and shepherds are feeding them filth. And they're hungry and they're starving and they don't know where to eat. And God's heart is broken over that. And the same is that they come as thieves and liars to steal their finances and to, to lie to them, to keep tithers, because it's all about the money and their ministry. Whereas where's the selfless preachers who will come and just release the kingdom? You know, and God was teaching me being, you know, what's the kingly anointing God? And he said, well, the kingly anointing isn't to rule over people, Chris, it's to lay your life down. Just like David risked his life to fight that lion and the bear, that's why I anointed him as king, so that he could lay his life down for my people. Jesus laid down his life for all of humanity to pick us up in resurrection power. Yeah? Even, for uh, even for the dogs, we're all bitches. I, yeah? When I was in Cuba, I saw a Feeding dog. off crumbs. This reminds me of that. Sorry, are you even filming? Yeah, we're still filming. That's fine. We're going to just tune in. And this is what we do. You know, this is the kingdom. <laughs> This dog was like, I was in Cuba. Yeah. We went to like a monument to fight, and he was just waiting outside there, and he was just like hunkered down. You wanna see? You wanna game. see? Tell me if you can see. Is Anyways, it dark? Yeah, it's kind of uh, weird. I got all these effects going on because it's kind of weird in here. Oh, like, well, he was, really he was hunkered down and, and shaking, and he had like sores all over his body, and. Oh, man. And uh, like, I'm just like, <gasps> and he was the sweetest dog, the sweetest dog. So I'm, I'm. Uh, Brent was Brent was feeding him something, and 
and we had water in our hands and he was just like barely any energy licking it. But oh, nobody had taken care of me. I had holes of in, wounds in him like that big. What? Wounds. like Wounds. Cut, oh, yeah. Cuts. <laughs> what? Oh, ha! Don't worry, we'll wipe the yeah. screen later. <laughs> so he had these cuts and it just, it did break my heart. So what you're saying is just like, I felt that. Yeah. That, you know, the, there's creatures and then people just pass them by like they're nothing. But yeah. like in heaven, he's a beautiful dog sitting yeah. on a throne, you know, like. Yeah, we're dog. all we're all dogs feeding crumbs from our master's table until we realize who we actually are in Christ. He calls his sons to come and sit with him and commune with him. Where else do you think you get the wine and the bread of revelation? Like you're feasting on Christ at the table. It was like that's why he demonstrated it at the Last Supper. And he said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Like you can eat all the crumbs you want. But you gotta get closer and closer to him until you're like John, where you can hear his heart. You get close enough to, like, where all the. He doesn't have to scream at you. You're close enough to hear the whispers of God, you know? And, uh, yeah, that's. You okay? <laughs> yeah, and then uh, that's what he. He broke the. Remember the disciples in Luke? Uh, Luke 19, I believe it was, on the road to Aeneas. Their heart was burning as he went over the scriptures with them. It's because he was releasing bread for them. He's leaving a breadcrumb trail. He was feeding their spirit as he was speaking revelation of himself. And he made as though he was going to go further, but they constrained him. Like they realized, like that that bread, I want I want to feast off it more and more until like he, you're not going any further. You're going further. You're taking me with you because God will always take us to a point where like, do you want to go further, or do you just want to camp out here? Yeah. Build a tabernacle here, and you know, build something for Moses. And who was that? Who's that other guy? <laughs> yeah, and then, but uh, they constrained him, and then they went. He hung out with them, and then they, their eyes were open at the breaking of bread. It's when you crack, and then the bread of his presence opens, and the fragrance of him comes. Then he disappeared because he wants to be pursued in the spirit. Cause that's the most purest place of your heart, the Holy of yeah. Holies, and you pursue Him in the spirit. You can see Him in the natural; that's fine. Yeah. But now, that's why we're here, it's, it's like He disappeared and just went right inside. In yeah. Right, rather than you know the people that are just like, well, I want this more. I want the things that you have for me more than this. Yeah. Yeah. Just like split a little bit. I want these things, but when you don't really have to covet these things because he's got more, he's got ma you know, many, many mansions, yeah. and like, they're designed for us specifically with like, you know, like, gorgeousness and, and anything you could want. You know, it's funny right now, I'm getting a download. So a lot of people think that like, you know, he disappeared, and it's like, oh, where did he go? It's like, Right inside, like that same presence that's like a, a outward manifest presence is waiting inside the temple of the Holy Ghost. You enter into the most holy place through the blood of Jesus by faith, and you just there he is. He never leaves us, forsakes us, no one can separate us from the, you know the love of God. It's the love of God because it's love is the pathway to get there through the blood. You know, it's a desire you to be with him, and then you can experience that peace all over again, the bread, the presence, the substance, the sauce, and you get downloads, blueprints. I felt like since, since God was like just touching, he showed up for that boy. Yeah. So he showed up with his presence too, like more so yeah. like not feeling the tenseness of that. Yeah. Like, I was feeling like, what am I twisting? Like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. so uncomfortable. Yeah. Is. And I don't know why. And, I can't feel on everything, especially the first video I did. I couldn't even. I had to take a break for like an hour. There was like arrows flying. I'm just like this target because there's some weird stuff a couple places over, and then some other people walking around. And I was like, everyone's like, 
for shooting arrows, but, but it makes shine, you stronger. Shine. Like if you step up, it's just like it begins to shine. You can feel it like coming, and people are like respectful of it. They're like walking. Around. <laughs> they walk around with glory when it starts coming out. Right? Like, yeah. You know, I, and I could feel that people were just kind of like you could see them watching with their spirits. Just gotta keep on leaking more, so it's. Yeah. We got our spirit big enough, like to cover the whole ground. Like even Samuel, you remember that one in the Old Testament where Samuel was prophesying, and then Saul came into the presence of Samuel and ripped off his clothes, and he started prophesying too. Because Samuel had an open heaven; it was like not just within him, like around him. It was like a, a regional open yeah. heaven. Yeah. I mean, that's that's for every believer. That's in an old covenant. Jesus could step on a land and then that guy can run into him and get free of demons without even a prayer? We need to go on a, a treasure hunt. Treasure hunt? Have you been on treasure hunt? Uh, I heard about that. It's like Bethel stuff. He used to go hunting for people. Yeah. Pull the treasure out of him? No. This is cool. I'll show you something. I saw it in a cartoon once. My hair is like... I miss you, baby. Watch. Oh, I thought there was a cord. Do, How you doing, sweetheart? Hmm? You're so warm. Am I? Yeah. yeah, we got all this cool technology you here. Take your oh. sweater off. That's why I have this here. So I have some clothes on. Them. Really? Yeah, you no, I'm fine. Oh, well, I was cold when I was the out there. Do you want to come in? Oh, I've no, been yelling at a camera pen. for the last hey, two hours. Can I use your pen? I just want to show them like what a treasure. Yeah, yeah. You, have you never done that? Yeah. Have you never done a treasure? Are we rich? Yeah. Do we make like a thousand of we dollars? We make a thousand, but <laughs> she's selling purses. I, I made ten bucks. Off ten Jesus. bucks. Ten bucks on Jesus. You know what? I'll give it to the kids. Okay, I'm gonna run to the washroom. We'll be back. Oh, I need. Need some paper? I don't know. Yeah, I'll just I'll stop this here and I'll make another video after. Okay. This feels weird, kind of like ignoring everyone and I'm just kind of doing our own thing. This is what you guys should be doing all day long. Just talk about God. Get a life. Get some eternal life happening, man. <laughs> Kidding. Whoa, my face went into darkness. Let's get the light. Okay, we'll stop on that note.